Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and yeah, today it's all about Trinidad, the second foundation of Buenos Aires, which sits on my shelf of shame for quite a while. And yes, I'm using that term deliberately, so apologies for that. I said, let's have a look at this game and then more of a coincidence, I noticed, oh wait, it has a solo mode even. So all the more reason to yeah, give it a spin on the channel. Before I forget, a huge shout out to a new patron, Joy. Really appreciate that you have decided to support me here. Really, really, I'm very, very thankful to that. But that's also true for all the other patrons and channel members. Um, you guys are truly amazing. Can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. And yeah, one caveat, as I've never played this game before, not even in multiplayer, I decided to play the somewhat shortened variant for the game. Usually you play through these so-called decade at the end of a certain number of decades, I believe after three decades, you have the end of an era, then you would be scoring in a normal play. You would do that basically three times. In the shortened variant, we are only going to play through the first two eras here. Apart from that, I keep reading that the solo rules as they are written are not fully fleshed out. They're very candidly speaking about things that you don't do anyway in a solo game. So you never go through a voting mechanic, for example, which kind of makes sense in a solo game. You're playing against an eye, by the way. But apart from that, I also found after reading that hmm, maybe some aspects are missing and some of the aspects are also a little bit unclear in the solo rules. The rest is okay. The rules for the multiplayer game seems to be okay. Maybe I've simply misinterpreted some of the stuff, but I think I have a good handle on the multiplayer game. In solo, yeah, we will see. But one thing that I keep reading about is that one AI may not be enough. And yeah, unfortunately there's only one deck of these AI cards that come with the game. There's also no way to get a second set of AI cards from what I understand. You can easily, uh, I don't know, use replacement cards, whatever, it's very simple instructions on these cards, really not the end of the world. I have also read that someone is simply using the same, de same deck for two AIs, which also makes sense, I guess. But ultimately, I think I will play the solo mode as written. That's also one of the reasons why I decided to keep the game a little bit shorter. I truly think this is a multiplayer game, so don't get me wrong. And I can't wait to bring it to normal game night, playing it with two, three other real life players. But I'm still curious about this game in solo mode because again I want to showcase the game to you. In theory I could simply run you through a three-player game but it's a very very long game I think and thinking this through for other players might be a little bit tough and challenging. So let's see how things go. I think that's enough said. Apart from that I think I have set up the board correctly. The main things that you have to keep in mind are these resource tracks and later on, or not later on, but there are also these um, coin stacks here. The rules are pretty clear what to set up for a two, three player game or four player game or whatever. I think a five, five plus player. So I think it can go up to six players actually. Um, but then there is also a section where it says how you can set it up with true two players without an NI player. And then they're removing some things. And this is where the rules are a little bit ambiguous. The same is somewhat true for the amount of buildings and tokens and soldiers that are available because um, they're only there's only a table that says three, four, five, six players. On the other hand, the rules speak about what to put out in case of a two player game. Then the rules also somewhere in the middle say, yeah, you typically assume if you play a two player game, you're also adding an AI, which is a cool way actually. I like that, that they're offering this, but they're not really mentioning it at during setup. So in the end, I think I have now a Frankenstein of the rules in respect to setup that is so really not a big deal I think but these are basically the amount of buildings and or soldiers and so on for three player games similarly for those row tokens and for those fate tokens but in respect to those resource tracks here I decided to go with a two player
play again because it's clearly written here on these tracks accordingly. These are one of the things which you could relatively easily fix in those rules, right? But that's that's really these things with a lot of these Kickstarters. They want to finish the rules, they have to print it, they have to ship it out, I get it. Backers are waiting for their copy, but yeah, I truly think you shouldn't save on the rules. But okay, I'm basically the blue player playing against the red player. I decided to go with a, let's call it a normal difficulty level, which means the I will have five of these worker discs available. In an easy mode, you would simply remove one. Then there is, I think, a somewhat tougher mode, which you would grant the I the full six workers. And there's a divine mode where they would have seven of these workers. So I think going with five in a shorter game, let's see how things go. Again, me as the blue player, I have all six workers at my disposal. I'm using those banners. The AI is not. I think I will not be able to leverage all of these banners here. Also not really clearly mentioned in the rules because simply playing solo against the AI, there will not be any voting. And I think there is one achievement which says if I think it's this one here. If you win a vote, then you can place a one banner on this board. And then again, if you are fulfilling those, you can score a lot of points and you get some benefits from that. I think in this case, I will not use the election one, but yeah. Let's see about that. Shouldn't be that big of a deal either. And apart from that, I also decided to go with a random mode here. I think for the solo, it does make sense. In a normal multiplayer game, the way how this works is there is some kind of, a, let's call it auction mechanics in respect to these characters, which could be nice. But again, there are also these easier introductory variants which say, okay, come on, deal two to every player and then have them pick one. That's basically what I did in this case. So I am the general. So I want to build barracks and or monuments or maybe even the fort, which would get me some points during the era scoring, which happens after three decades. And then I also have randomly drawn one of um, a general affiliate. You can have other affiliates, um, but in this case, during setup, you take an affiliate that matches to your player, uh, not your, your character color, that is. So I have not really decide. I have drawn a general affiliate which comes with a special power. I will come to this a little bit later. As for the AI player, they are the architect and I think there is a list of roles which you randomly assign to the AI player and architect is one of those so they will also score some points. They are also using these uh, affiliates but I think Actually, I do think that they're not going to use those affiliate powers. You will still score points for like colored set of, let's say, professions, let's put it like this. But I believe they're never going to use the special powers here for their affiliates. I might be wrong. Maybe I will have another go at the rules and see if this is somewhere mentioned. Maybe I will play it if it really completely makes sense at that point in time. Maybe that's how you should play these AIs anyway. But apart from that, that's basically their starting setup. They We all start the game with one silver and one bronze. Yes, these coins do come with a, let's call it deluxe version of this game. Very nicely done. We all start the game with two wood and to stone here respectively. Unfortunately, the rules also don't tell me who goes first in a solo game. So <laughs> I think simply have decided I will go first. And yeah, I think with that being said, we should be pretty much good to go. Again, the game ends after the second era. I think we are still doing some final scoring or so. And then that's basically that. Okay, then let's have a quick look at the board here. This is basically the city of Buenos Aires, which we are trying to build. I think these are, there are several districts. Um, these are these are bordered in a little bit thicker line here. We have these two southern middle parts, which are, I think, around the mayor building or so. So we are never allowed to build into those sections here. These shaded ones are um, basically reserved for one of those major buildings here, like the Cabildo, for example, like the Cathedral cathedral. This is the starting region of the board for the solo player already have brought out one of these lot markers here. So the AI already starts with one lot as far as I understood. Um, I don't know how it 
as a Swiss game or not. Um, in order to build those, we have several sections of these large buildings down here. We have basically other large buildings like the roads or like the walls. We can ship some goods here. We can improve our status with the building. Um, then again, this is the time track. This is the turn order track. Again, I have kind of really assigned this randomly down here. Here we have the tension track. So there is a cool, let's call it war mechanic in the game or a conflict mechanic in the game. Nothing crazy unless you're playing with the extended war variant or so, as far as I remember, but I'm not playing with that either. Definitely a lot of cool stuff going on. So. On the main game board there are some actions but I think for the most part we will spend our time on our player board taking actions here. So in order to take actions you have to assign workers. The costs for these actions really vary from action to action. They are always printed here so in case I want to place a lot for example, down here, I would need to spend two workers in order to build one of those slots. Easy as that. And then there are other actions here. As I've never played this game before, I have really no clue. The only real, let's call it, direction I've been given from my card here is the general. So again, I will score victory points times the era for each barrack or um, basically for the monument or five for Ford. Hmm, interesting. Then I get a, an extra victory point basically for a two to three player game here respectively. Down here my special power which is a fast power so in theory I can also use it outside of my turn. I can get one silver when you win a war or two silver if they were pirates so that's really not bad. This number or this value here in red is for the extended war rules which I'm not considering. So in this case with this combination I may want to consider to drive up the tension just to use my power as well, right? I think this kind of makes sense, but I think the AI will play way more erratic from what I can tell from these cards. So I cannot really target the AI properly or can tackle it. At least that's how I think about it. But again, that's that's the one direction I may have been given. Apart from that, I may want to prepare some scoring in respect to these districts. At the end of an era, we will score those districts here. So getting some buildings out there, which will definitely help me. And I think getting buildings out also definitely does make sense because only then will I be able to activate those buildings in town. So right now there are no buildings whatsoever. So the only thing I really can do in town right now is to actually build stuff. And in order to build stuff, I think I may need to go, for example, with a lot. That could be my very first action to take. So I guess let's try to keep things simple. I will have to build a lot. In order to build a house, for example, I can't simply build a house. I first need to build a lot. So I can replace a lot with my house and then I can later on replace a house with a palace which might give me some more victory points. So I think starting with a lot does make sense. Again, here it's printed. I need to spend two of my workers. So let's do that. Apart from that, there are no extra cost. And now I am allowed to place a lot basically on any of these red spaces here that is obviously not occupied by another building or another lot or so. I could now debate to say I want to do that as far as possible from the AI player. And right now I have two of these lots at my disposal. And everything in respect to resources is very, very tightly uh, limited. So when they're gone, they're typically gone for the most part at least. But on the other hand, I may also want to consider hmm, maybe the eye is playing something over here and I want to benefit from what the eye is doing. So if we are basically building our own parts of town, I don't think that this is actually worth it. So I may want to say, let's put something closer here for example because then I could build another house I could also build another lot in there and then from there I could then also activate adjacent building because that's how you do it later on if there are buildings out and you want to activate them you have something adjacent to it unless there are roads but that's already a special thing so maybe I want to do this or I want to do that but on the other hand I guess I want to be in this more prominent location down here because a lot of things that for those major buildings we are down here they're increasing the victory points 
points for those regions. So I think I want to be in there. I could still debate to say, let's put it a little bit farther out, but from here I can basically go everywhere. So I guess I want to do that here. Let's do it again. I have no clue. I think again, there's no point using my affiliate at this point in time, but I believe I have already messed up slightly because here at the start of a round, um, we are doing a little bit of these things. First of all, we are getting more affiliates out hooray and we also have to play the salaries for our affiliates so i guess let's totally do that i think i'm the starting player so i should be forced to go first here so these are the affiliate decks which also have a multi-purposed role i come to that a little bit later and i like that actually and we have three discard piles. We have a common discard pile where we have the rogue mate in there and then we have individual player caller discard piles. So the way how this works is I can now either pick the top card of any of those discard piles. Right now our choices are somewhat limited or I will go for the top two cards here and will choose zero, one or two. I can choose zero because I have to in theory pay upgrade or salaries for those. If there's really a card which I couldn't care less about I'm not for to take one here. What, what does the Shum Roadmaker affiliate actually say? So it's also a fast power use this card before a city council voting procedure begins. So this is a card which we will never really use in the solo mode. So again, I couldn't care less about unless again, I want to build a set. Having like colored affiliates and or characters in front of you is beneficial in respect to the scoring. But in this case, I don't have blue cards. So I will definitely go for two of those cards and we'll pick one of those. So we have the Carpenter affiliate, which also unfortunately doesn't help me with my general and we have the Defender affiliate. So what does the Carpenter do? It comes with a slow power, which I can use, which means I can use as a free action during my turn. Again, the fast power is something which I can use pretty much anytime unless it's specified on the card. So when you can use a carpentry or wood hacienda building twice in a single turn using one worker only, that's very nice. Unfortunately, right now there aren't any carpentries or wood hacienda buildings on there. This is really good. Using it twice for one worker, that can be extremely... And giving me some kind of a short-term goal to say, let's bring out carpentry so we can use it. On the other hand, we have the defender here. Gains seven victory points every time walls are part of the fight calculation this turn. Yeah, that's really a long shot. So in this case, I guess I will go for the carpenter of Again, I could decide to not go with it, but I think for now I'm okay actually because the price or the salaries I have to pay doesn't really change with a second carpenter or with a second affiliate, I think. So let's hold on to this. This goes into my discard pile here respectively. So someone could go for it, including myself later on, if that's still the top most card um, during the time I'm picking. And now it's over to the AI player. And again, the rules are a little bit ambiguous about how they are going to basically take their cards. They go always going for a set and if there is no set possibility then they will go I believe for the highest value card here. So I don't really know if the AI actively draws cards from the deck. So maybe that's how we should play it and maybe that's that's what they mean. So we will definitely take two cards so we will increase the options for the eye. Okay, two more road makers here. I think that's that's how I want to play it. If there is now a pink card here, they will go for the pink card. And if not, then we will draw and then we will take the best card available, right? The highest value card. So in this case, I believe this is the 41. So the road maker affiliate, this one goes here. This will be the card that they will grab. And what does this road maker allow me to do? gain plus one resource or plus one bronze or plus one faith when you activate a building in a district with roads can be nice but building roads can take some time actually especially in a two-player game i think this is also one of the problems with a true solo mode with only one ai player because those major buildings might take some time but okay, that's not too bad. Now we have to pay the salaries. So for every three affiliates we have, we have to spend one 
across and we can discount it basically from using those banners. Right now we are far away from any banners so let's not worry about this so we are definitely paying one bronze. For now again I could have decided not to go for it but I think it could help me. This carpenter here the eye doesn't pay any salaries and now we would have moved into the actual action phase. I have already taken my action here so sorry for that taking things out of order but ultimately it really didn't change a lot. So we are moving over to the AI. So let's have a look at those AI cards. During setup, what you do is you take two random cards from this deck, um, you put them basically face up and put them on the bottom of the deck. So not every time you will have the same set of AI cards, not every round. Once you are through, then you're reshuffling, you do that procedure again. So the actions that the AI takes are slightly less foreseeable or predictable. Let's put it like this. Again, if you play with two AI players from what I have notice or what I have read is you simply shuffle them all and again you play two AI players from the same deck of cards but also makes them both quite erratic I would think. So let's see what they're up to. Okay interesting we will create a fighter and you see that it's a pretty straightforward thing that you are doing. Then we are following here from top to bottom. If no fighter create a miliciano so we don't have a fighter so we will definitely if there is a miliciano we don't have a miliciano. If there is a veteran no we don't. If there is a soldier no. If there are soldiers no. Uh, then basically we do this. But what we first do is we are basically following here. We don't have a fighter so we will create a miliciano which costs them one of their action. Normally you're supposed to not use these discs and that's the main reason for that is because um, when you are later on placing workers on the capital buildings on the major buildings as in a multiplayer game you don't get them back unless the building is built. The AI player always have their five workers available in this case. So in this case we will use some placeholder tokens. Let's I don't know go for a resource cubes here. Let's go for these wooden resource cubes for example. We place it onto the card. It also tells me how many workers I have to use. In this case we are following basically the normal logic here. We will take one of those mini Cianos here. We'll place it here. We will take one of their military markers. They are two-sided. This is the veteran side. Side. This is the normal side. So now they do have some fighting power later on and they have that fighting power in theory yeah, until they die. I think they only take one wound but still they're in a much better shape in respect to any uprisings or any pirate attacks for example. But apart from that they haven't done really an awful lot. So let's have a quick look at the card. Then the AI gains two points on the city council track which will ultimately give them some victory points at the end of the game. So one and two so they have crossed over this threshold here. So if this would be the end state they would score two extra victory points at the end of the game. But that's already the end of that action. So far I like those AI cards. I know there are some other cards out there which will definitely require you to make some decisions and or following let's call it workflows to some extent making the best choices but it's basically back to us and I think now it's time to build a Carpintiera. And here's one piece which I no, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. Maybe I knowing that I would take this affiliate would might have uh, changed my, my pick of actions to go with uh, carpentry before but I think you still need something adjacent to it anyway to activate it so I think we are still okay. No I think we are okay. So we are going to build a carpenter right. I need two stone. Cantera is uh, what is it I think this is a quarry indeed. So no let's do that. So we will have to spend another of our workers. We will have to spend two stone. Luckily we start the game with two stone. Hooray but they are now out of let's say of the game for now. They're going back to the supply. They could come back. We immediately get the bonus here which are also two points on the city council track. Let me do that off camera so we have the same space at the AI player. And then we finally get to place the building here. Um, right now I think we only have two buildings or are these three? I think we have three of those car um, carpentries available. Again nicely sculpts actually and this could really make sense to paint those so I might really consider this and you have to play them adjacent to one of your 
buildings. Well, I think in this case, these neutral buildings, you can also start building going from these red spaces. The idea now could be to build as far away from the iPlayer as possible. Again, I want to use their buildings, but I don't necessarily want to have them use my buildings. Once I have placed this carpentry on the board, it belongs to nobody. That's really important. We can later on grade it up and so on. So I think the problem now with this is if I place it here, I could say it's of no interest for the other players to upgrade it. And by upgrading it, it also could benefit me. So I think I don't want to move it entirely away from the iPlayer right now. Again, I have no real clue how those solo cards work. So I guess we are going to build that carpentry there. And now I have something adjacent to it with my color. So with the next action, I could immediately activate it. So that can be definitely very nice. Okay, let's see what the eye is doing. Okay, they're going to build a minor building. Select the first building, not yet adjacent to AI buildings and available in the game supply. Um, yeah, use this order carpentry. This is where you should know, <laughs> you should know the AI cards a little bit. But again, ultimately I could have, I could have known that. I could have known that based on where the eye is starting off, I think I could have known that. But okay, let's do that. And there is now a slight flow chart. It says, okay, if there is a building on the board, if it's a south or a north district, in this case, it's a south district. This is how you then place your buildings on the board. They will remain in their district because that's how they want to pump up the value of the district. And in the most part, they will basically start from the south. In this case, as far as I understood, they will place their carpentry not really there again it's a carpentry south to their building this would have been blocked they would go i think in clockwise order around their building and then i think it also depends if it's an even or an odd decade um, but in this case i believe we are placing the building in here for them to use if they would have placed the building here that would have been nice because this is then also adjacent here but i could still debate to say i want to build another lot in here for example just to gain something from that other carpentry out here as well there's still one more carpentry out i'm not 100 percent sure if they will build it i guess if they go for the another build a minor building action then i guess they will do so i guess i guess in theory they could also that's <laughs> that's already a point in theory they could also have simply updated their lot with a house instead but okay, I think it is what it is. So we are going to also spend one work. It says one, two, three, and depending on what they do, if it's an upgrade or so, that you can spend more than just one worker. In this case, building the carpentry out, it's only one worker. So again, we are placing one of these wood tokens here. Again, right now, it doesn't matter yet. It will matter once they are start placing building outs into the major buildings but I will still use a marker here respectively so that I can or I keep remembering. Back to us. I am somewhat tempted to also build a Cantera so a quarry um, which cost me also one worker and two wood. I have some good means of getting wood but I think we really need those resource buildings out. I think I don't want to spend too many resources right now on, on my houses on the casa because again those will score at the end of this era so not at the end of this round or decade. So I guess going for this, a Mercado I could also make a point for, but no, I can't because first of all, I would need stone. I have spent all my stone. So no, I think I will have to build the Cantera here. So yeah, let's do that. We will get two more voting things, one and two. And again, in the solo mode, I think we will never use it, um, but we will have to spend two wood, not a problem here. And then we are building a quarry, which is this miniature. And again, there is a reason now to, I don't know, place something like this. Again, I have to place it adjacent to my building. This is no longer my building, it's a public building that I basically gifted to the city let's put it like this or to really say let's put it in here the problem with that now is it's okay because he could the i could then upgrade it for me and i could also leverage it so that might help me as well the problem is i'm somewhat strengthening their district here so i could then say okay then let's maybe go here in the middle basically starting a new district up there and that's i think i tend to 
do now because I want to make sure I'm also incentivize him or them to upgrade the buildings also for me. I'm not sure if this is how it works, but for now I will play it there. And from there I can then basically activate it in order to gain, yeah, you guessed it, some stone. But that's already the end of my turn. Back to the AI. Uh, you guessed it right, I may have mentioned this or should have mentioned it. The AI is never spending any resources for the buildings or other stuff. They're still spending money if they need to, but in respect to resource like stone or wood and so on, they will collect it, but they will not spend it. So now they're going to build a lot. If there is already a lot, which there is. So, okay, then this answers my question. When would they build a house? No, they will do that with a distinct card. Okay, that makes sense. I think I played this other card correctly then. Again, if there is already a lot, replace a lot with a house. But if there are already five houses, build a palace instead of replacing a house. Okay, so let's simply do that. Building a house costs the AI two workers here respectively. Again, that's something that is printed on those player boards. We will take one of those colored house cubes, we are placing it with this. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. And this lot goes back in here. I really do like the feel of the city here. But that's again the end of the turn. And I think so far, I like those AI cards, I must say. I think they are okay, unless again, I'm playing something terribly wrong here. Back to me. I have still two more workers left and with these two workers, I could harvest resources basically twice, one and two in here. In this case, I believe it doesn't necessarily matter in which order I do things, but just to show you how these affiliates work, I think I will go for the carpenter again. What we can do now here is on this carpenter, I could spend simply one worker to collect two wood. Easy as that. Or I could basically spend one work or use one work and spend two wood to gain one of these precious resources, which you can later on. I think you have to spend them for uh, stuff. <laughs> I think when you build a church or so, you, you build these precious resources. Uh, as I don't have the wood, I think the answer is relatively easy. So we are moving this worker over here. We have a carpentry. I have a building of my color. Next lot counts as a building in this case, believe me, next to the carpentry. So I would now collect two wood. But because I have the carpenter affiliate here, I could now decide to use them. You can use a carpentry or wood hacienda building twice in a single turn with using one worker only. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So we are tapping it. The thing is with tapping, you don't get it back right away. You have to work for it, which is something I really do like actually. So we have spent it. So in total, we will now collect four wood. The thing with these resources, like with the money, is you never take it from the supply. Unless it's, uh, I think, this steel resource here, that's the only resource in faith which you get from the normal supply. Everything else you take from these resource tracks. You can pick and choose from which you take those resources in any combination. So I could go three here, one here, one, 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 one. It's really up to me. Unless, again, if a track is empty, it's empty. The thing is, when you empty a specific resource track here, you, the player who's emptied will lose the victory points. There are some rules for the AI player. They will try to avoid that if possible. As far as I understood, you have to take the resource. So I could not tap it and then say, I only want three. That's at least how I understand those rules. It's written for the money, but I'm relatively certain it also counts for the resources. Again, I and on top of things, every resource track that is empty will also drive up the tension at the end of a decade. So, of course, the more you're exploiting nature, um, you are fighting with those tribes there and yeah, they, they will not like what you're doing here. What are we going to do here? Um, we will take the four for sure. Um, let's do something like maybe this two and two, and I can pick and choose. And these are also not automatically refilling. Only when they're empty, then they're refilling. So 
the more you are using, the more nature it has to it. It's really a nice mechanic, actually. So yeah, I have the four wood here. I will place them next to my player board. And I've also used my affiliate here. So I think that was an okay turn for me. And back to the AI. So let's see what they are doing. Okay, they are loading the ship. That's a very interesting action. AI places on the dock a triplet of resources. Odd decades, all three resources, even decades. The type most uh, most available. Take the resources from the board grids. Ha <laughs> ha. If a set of resources is not available on the board, take the alternative. Swaffing odd and even decades. Makes sense. Then the eye gains three points on the council track. Because we haven't built the harbor yet, um, they have to spend two. Oh, that's an interesting one. They only have one worker left now. So yeah, I think they're not taking that action then. Um, create a fighter. Are you kidding me? Are you really kidding me? Okay, they will do that again. Um, we have a fighter. If there is a Miliciano, upgrade it to veteran. Okay, this will cost them their remaining action, right? This was the fifth one. Yes, and I think from there they will pass then afterwards, but I think we will also pass in the end. So they will simply upgrade their fighter to the other side, which will then create some more attack value, maybe even some more health when we are coming to a fight, which might happen. On top of it, I think we can just see that here the I gains four points on the city council track. Are you kidding me? So let's see one, two, three, and four. So we really can score an awful lot of points with these tracks here, obviously. But that's basically their turn done or their round done, the decade done. So let's move back to us. We still still have a worker here. We can also remove houses, by the way, or palaces. We can also create Melisianos. Yeah, again, I think they have to. Yeah, that's the upgrade, basically. This is also where we need those precious resources, exactly. Hmm, we could build a plaza, which could also make things, but this would cost us one silver. And we are, we are slowly running out of money. And I also want, uh, want to send out, the, I want to really do everything. That's my problem. So I guess let's see yeah, how we need resources, right? With the resources, we could then go for a Mercato, for example, or for a house later on. Yeah, I think we have to get some more resource. There's also an action. I think you can send someone to the warehouse, to the city warehouse, but then you're losing victory points. And yes, you can have uh, negative victory points in this game. Um, so no, let's go to the quarry for one. Has basically the same thing as the carpentry. We can um, basically either get two stone or we can spend two stone past the worker here to get one of these precious or valuable resources. In this case, we will go for two stone. Same rule supply as with the wood. In this case, I will simply take the two stone from this leftmost track here. Then we are moving back to the eye. They are out of workers, so we are not going there. We will basically pass. The same for us. We will also pass. So this will now be the end of the decade. Decade. So we have a handy dandy little card here. First of all, we could reactivate our cards. We haven't sent any of our workers down to this spot here, which will trigger at the end of the round. So basically now at the end of the decade. Decade. Uh, what am I talking about? And so that's we can basically pass over this. Then we are checking the ship. No one went to the shipping action, so we can basically pass over it. Something I may want to do at some point in time. Next, we will go for the tension level. Right now, none of the resource tracks, all the coin stacks are empty. So we are not moving any of those counters on their own. What we do though, there is a randomizer. We will take the top card from this stack. We will put it into the discard pile. If this card would have shown one of the tracks, either the natives or the pirates, we would have moved that marker ahead accordingly. This didn't happen here, but this is also the way how we can get more cards into the discard pile here. So we have the Sailmaker Affiliate. As a fast action, you can do the load the ship action, discounting up to two workers from the cost. That's amazing, really, because I think load the ship costs us two workers or one worker if we would have built the port here and basically discounting this up to two, we could do that for free, basically. That's insane. That's really insane. But this was the tension, so we are not seeing a war anytime soon. 
only when one of these markers would be here in the reds or if there would have been the situation where there would have been already two markers on top of each other only then would we see a war and then it wouldn't matter where these markers are we only ever see one war um, and i think in a tie the pirates always let's call it win in respect to the war prioritization okay that's basically that step done next we would do the refill we are not refilling only empty resource tracks are being refilled so things will definitely get a little bit more sparse that's for sure we haven't messed with the turn order in any way you can send tokens in there in order to influence that respectively in this case i don't think if the i ever does this or if they would care about this i really don't know then we would recover our workers we are only recovering the workers that are basically let's call it on the player board or on the actions let's say somewhat down here never on the major buildings unless again for the ai that's a little bit different there if we would now be at the end of the decade we would then also go for a scoring phrase which is not going to happen so again last thing to do is to move the turn marker here accordingly and then I think we will start the next round of the game. I think I will keep playing for now maybe I will even go through the full decade let's see how things go. This time let's try to not forget what happens at the start of the round so we are getting more cards. I'm still the starting player so again I can make a choice. The sail maker is extremely valuable and I may want to consider to load actually discounting up to two workers from the cost that's so so tempting actually I think I will go for the sale maker it doesn't really help me with the scoring but I will still take it no I think this will help me that's a great one let's do the same for the AI again I'm not sure how to play this will they always draw two cards or will they make some choices Honestly, I do think to play this consistently, I think I want to draw two cards for the AI. Let's do that. And from those, they will then either choose one that will help them or one which has the higher card. In this case, it's the governor affiliate. So we are taking this, the governor affiliate will go to them. It doesn't help them with scoring, but now we have the merchant affiliate available to them. If you have to take precious resource, you can receive them from the game supply. Nice, that's a May. So if you don't want to trigger, I don't know, uprising or so, then this might help you. But for now, this doesn't really help them at all. All. Now we have to pay our salaries. I am still at three of those affiliates. We're never counting our character card here, so I still have to spend one. So we're giving one silver away from one prawn. So the next card already would move me beyond that limit. So I either making sure I'm getting some more money, which again is not unlikely actually to happen this round, at least I think or I have to discard down and you can also discard cards that you have already used let's say I don't want any more carpentry thingies here then I could say let's discard them I want to hold on to my ceramic but I think ultimately you do want to make sure you are scoring points you are using these special abilities so they can be pretty powerful obviously okay that was the start of the round let's take some actions and I think we want to start generating some coin rather sooner than later right let's do that so we are using our sail maker as a fast action you can do the load the ship action discounting up to two workers from the cost so we have used them amazing and then we can either send three of the same resources here to my shipping space like this we can build a triplet so basically a set of i think it's iron I think it's iron, wood and stone or is it precious resource? I have to check that actually. It's a precious resource. We could gain an iron then or steel from that. Or we can send um, basically one silver and one prawn 
also to gain a faith token. Faith is a majority thing in this game. The more faith you have, the more points you will score. So that's definitely a nice thing to have. I don't have the money. I need the money. So I will send three wood in here. The good thing is I don't need to spend any workers because of this discount here. This was an amazing card, by the way. And for that, we will then get coin, but only at the end of the decade. Again, we had it here. Keep in mind the second step of the end uh, of round stuff. We will get our bonuses respectively. But yeah, let's try to not forget that. But that's basically our turn gun. It's still our action, um, but we have discounted it heavily. Over to the AI. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, they will build a lot. There is not a lot. They replace it with a house. But if there are already four houses, oh, that's a slightly different card, actually. Oh, that's interesting. So there are variations of the same card. Oh, I like that. That's cool. Um, but there's already four houses. Build a palace instead of replacing a house. There, there is not. There is also not a lot to upgrade. So we will bring out a new lot. Again, I have to check on where to place. I think they will stick to this district here it's still a southern district and I believe the same rules apply now they will simply start from here going clockwise around it so we are placing the lot in here which again might help me with either of those carpentries I'm relatively certain when they are upgrading they will upgrade the carpentry in their sector in their district yeah that was I think a slight goof on my side building a lot will cost them two of their work workers respectively and I think that's their action already but they are already preparing for some serious scoring here they have a house which might give them some points to have a carpentry so I think they might score some extra points from there before I forget I think I want to reactivate my cards also happening at the end of the round um, for every worker I sent there I can reactivate up to two cards but that's already my turn. Back to the AI. Okay, they're going to activate a building. Okay, that's a nice one. So if there are at least two resources in the grid, take one wood, decade carpentry, or one... Okay, I see. So this is something that's happening independent of where the buildings are. This first step here, I kept reading. If there are at least two resources in the grid, take one thing. Two resources in the grid. Take one wood or one stone. Even decayed. Honestly, they're all even when you look at it. It's 80, 90, 10, but I think they mean this is the first, this is the second. So we are now in an even decade. So I think they will go for one stone and they will take a stone from a grid where there is at least two in there. So we will simply go for the second one. Again, they will hold on to it. They will never use it, but they could still use them for scoring as far as I know. Okay, that's done here. If two is not possible, merchant tries to, but we don't have a merchant. So I think that was this one done. Now we are going here. Then activate a building adjacent to an eye in this order. Corporation market, we don't have that. Oh yeah, okay. Corporation or market gain two or one from the board stacks. Remember that no resource must be paid. That's clear. Uh, or the church we would gain one faith by paying one silver or one bronze or with, with the, if the cathedral have been built. So I think in this case there might be other activate things which might do other stuff. But in this case we neither have a corporation or a market or a church. So I think in this case we will not do that. But we will definitely use the worker here respectively. Oof, okay, this was a little bit odd, but I really hope I have covered it well. Back to us, and I think I want to make sure I'm getting one of these precious resources before I have to spend a victory point for it. So I guess we will activate the Cantera that is close or that's adjacent to my lot right now. I will go for the second option down here. So I will spend two stone plus that worker here. And these not don't go back to the resource grid, of course. And for that, we will take one precious resource from the track here respectively and place it next to our player board. That's our action already. Well, let's do this. Okay, they will build another lot. If there is already a lot, yes, we have one. Replace a lot with a house. But look, okay, it's, it's a three. So they can build palaces pretty quick, actually. But in this case, it's pretty clear we are replacing this lot with another of their houses. 
has to be this one. Down here it says one, two, three, but I believe there is no action that is one in this category. And I think I have read it on the geek that this is simply a misprint on this card. This should say two to three, at least I think. So they are spending the remaining two workers down here to build that house. But again, they will score some serious points. They will score some points with it. Let's put it like this. The thing is, I still have four workers left because of my worker discount. This ship may or sail maker is an amazing affiliate. And by the way, there is an action down here which would give me more cards. And right now I'm kind of tempted to do that to go there just to show you as much as possible I mean I'm exploring the game so I want to see what it has to offer on the other hand I may also want to consider going to one of these major buildings the problem really is for this cathedral to build we need to spend one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven workers in total i have six i will never get my workers back there is an action which allows you to retake those workers but then you have to pay a fine in respect to victory points in case for the cathedral that's 12 victory points points which you have to spend. So if you really noticed, no one is helping you with the cathedral, you're on your own. The port here, this is more realistic, but even the port, I wouldn't be able to build that on my own. There are workers or there are affiliates which I believe allow you to use city council workers. Those guys over here. Ooh, okay, that's nasty. That's nasty. So I think I want to see how they're doing their major buildings, even though I'm missing out on victory points because the first player to commit to a major building first will get some victory points here. So if I go there with one, two, three, I could, I think I could place four workers in here. I would gain three victory points right off the bat, but that really would have to hope that the eye is going there with one of their next actions. Even the port I wouldn't be able to build on my own. Again, I have six workers. It needs eight spaces here. I think this is also the more fun part to play this with more than just one AI. Just a thought. So no, um, I will not commit to a major building just yet. I might want to help because there are still some victory points to gain from that for sure. So we will spend two of our workers to go to the gain a card action, which is an affiliate card in the end. And again, I have the choice of getting one of the face up affiliates there. The next one will be drive me into more money I have to spend, but they could also allow me to gain more money. The road maker, we already know, doesn't help me. The merchant could be okay, but I don't know. And the defender is something I don't really know right now. We didn't build any walls so far. So no, I guess I will go for one two cards here and there I may pick one or zero if I want. It doesn't help me with any of my sets. I have the governor affiliate. If you have a negative value on the war penalty rack, pay one. I think it's I think it's silver to move one step to the left to gain points. That can be very nice if you are not winning um, the war, which again at some point in time can happen. But right now, I don't know. Oh, we have the noblewoman after winning the council war, which is again something that would, wouldn't happen here. So I think I may have wasted this action. Mm, so I guess I will do something like this and we'll discard them both. That was kind of underwhelming, actually. I mean, the governor can be nice, but it really costs me a lot of money, actually. No, I think I don't want to go there. So the AI is going to pass. We already know that. So again, it's back to me or it's still me. And I believe I can go there again, actually. So I could try again. I still have two more workers, but they could be more useful stuff. The problem now is I'm out of stone. In theory, I can activate the same space multiple times during a round. The problem now is you have, you can only do that activation for each of those production actions, uh, locations that you are adjacent to. Right now, we only have one quarry on the board. So which is this one here. And, and in theory, I already have activated this. So I can't go there again. Whew. 
that's kind of a bummer actually. Do I want to produce more wood? I can't even go for a casa. Maybe this wasn't a good idea actually. Maybe I should have gone for stone. We still have another round um, before we are scoring so I think that's still Fine. Maybe I simply want to go for a Miliciano just to prepare myself and then... Pre yeah, I think let's do that. Let's do that. So we're going here. We are taking one of those fellas before they're out. They're also heavily limited actually. So we have some fighting power with us as well. We can stay here. We still have one more worker. We don't have the barracks right now right um, in order to build the barracks so we need really an awful lot of stuff so i think getting in here oops in here to get more wood i think might be crucial yeah let's do that and i think i will do something like this again right i don't want to empty it right now i don't want to drive the tension out because my military prowess isn't the best actually yeah let's not do that so that's basically us we have spent all of our workers we are doing the end of round stuff again we are following through this handy dandy card first of all we will reactivate as we have placed a worker in here we are getting to reactivate up to two of our affiliates nice let's do that so we have the sailmaker sailmaker back and the carpenter affiliate back amazing so we will definitely make good use out of those guys then we have in fact the shipping action so we are looking over here we have three of the same which would give us one silver and one bronze so we'll have to take it from one of those coin stacks here so we are taking those two away um, we are basically giving one bronze away so which means we haven't emptied it that's really important we haven't emptied it it's there is still coinage left these go simply back to the supply but at least for the next round to come we have some money left so we can do stuff that's nice again we have the tension track we are not getting any more tension from those resource tracks but again we will draw the topmost card noble woman of fear this is now a combination if we would have known we would have seen that but now we see there is a pirate icon on the top right of this card there could be up to two icons but in this case it means the pirate tension track has moved for the first time because it's not yet in the red and because it's not a double token yet we are not triggering during a war but still we are seeing some movement here then we would refill there is nothing to refill we don't worry about the turn order right now last but not least we will recover all of our workers and then we would go into the next round to come but i think for today i will end my playthrough here let me know what you think also if you know the game and have already spotted some errors especially also for the solo mode if you think there is something that i should have done differently then absolutely let me know the main question point for me is around those affiliate cards maybe i need to really check the geek if there is a question that has been answered already on this piece i don't know if i should be drawing cards or i should always consider cards that are available which would help them with the set i don't really know i think it might be the case actually uh with my next video i should be able to complete the round and also the era so you will see some scoring i will should be also able to play through the next era and then together we will decide if i will go for the full Monty, let's put it like this, so the full era here uh, for the full game or if I should stop after the second era and after the second scoring just to give you a glimpse of the game in the end. Depends a little bit on how interested you are seeing this game. So far I must say I really like what I'm seeing mechanically and again for the multiplayer mode the vast majority of the rules are crystal clear actually. From the layout perspective in the rules they could have been it could have been better but it's okay I think you should be able to find most of the information. In the meantime there's also an official FAQ 
from the designer, I believe. But I think ultimately for the multiplayer game, the game is, is pretty clear. The question really starts with the solo mode, which simply seems to be an add-on, relatively late add-on to a game. You know these questions, the first first entry of, let's say, a new game on the Geek, or one of the first for Kickstarter, is there a solo mode? And I'm pretty sure this is what the designer tried to um, yeah, accommodate to. With that being said, Hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah, until then, bye bye.